making awesome things happen at Carver Middle School. Hello again, everybody. My name is Dale Caffey with more of the great things happening at Waco ISD during the summer. I am on the campus of Carver Middle School. I'm with Miss Tarsia Hubert. As you can see, Tarsia has a shirt that says, Gotta Love Math. And of course, we know that it's mathematics, but it's also an acronym for making awesome things happen. Tarsia, tell us just a little bit about your organization and what you're doing at Carver this summer. Okay, so our organization name is Making Awesome Things Happen. We're a nonprofit organization that focuses on um, improving and developing mathematical proficiency in economically disadvantaged children. So we provide quality services, tutoring services, mentoring services to children of low income families, low socioeconomic status. Um, and we're providing a free two-week summer math camp here at Carver Middle School and in this camp we're doing hands-on culturally relevant activities which is a research-based strategy for improving mathematics skills and in, in traditionally underrepresented students. We are about to go into the classrooms behind us where we can hear activity yes. going on uh, but before we do that talk a little bit about the history of making awesome things happen. I understand that this is the first time you've come to Waco. Yes, so we have been operating in Austin, Texas for the last five years. We became a 501c3 nonprofit in 2010, and then we started offering math camps and tutoring programs in the Austin area. So for the last five years, we've offered a summer camp in Austin, Texas, and this year be our sixth year. And we have seen success. We have seen our numbers grow over the years. When we first started, we only had 28 students participating in our camp and now we have gotten in Austin up to 99 students. Um, this is our first year here in Waco, Texas and we have 127 students registered wow. so we're really excited for our first year to be that large and we just can't wait to see how this program grows if WISD and GW Carver allow us to continue it within this district. Certainly, 125 students, and it's my understanding that most of these students are in the elementary schools that will ultimately feed yes. Carver, and so they get kind of a leg up on some math skills. Yes, so we, we chose Carver Middle School because of the demographics of the school. It's about 98% economically disadvantaged students, and so in the schools, the elementary schools that feed into it share those same uh, demographics. So we, we targeted Carver, and we also heavily targeted the schools that feed into it, which is Cedar Ridge, J. Hines, and Brook Avenue. Um, now, we have students from all over Waco enrolled, but those were the ones that we targeted heavily. Uh, let's talk about what helped you to come here. Obviously, some grants, you could, because you guys have to, uh, you know, make ends meet. Yes, yeah, so we offer our program completely free because again we're targeting low socioeconomic status students and so in order to do that we have to have funds from somewhere to be able to make it free and so this year we were we were able to get sponsors from the Waco Foundation we have an impact immediate impact grant from them and also the Cooper Foundation and Time Warner Connect the Million Minds and we also received donations from Burke, Coach and Ford, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, some lower um, donations from those companies as well. That is wonderful. Now earlier we talked about culturally culturally relevant math. Yes. Before we go into the classrooms, talk a little bit about what that means. Okay, so culturally relevant pedagogy is a research-based theory um, that was developed by a researcher who went and studied teachers that were successful with African-American students. And so she did an ethnography over an extended period of time, and she studied the common characteristics among these teachers, and then she put them together and made a theory to make a long story short. So in this theory, um, the uh, instructors and, and the ones who are teaching, they focus on a rigorous career curriculum, which we're using the TEKS, which everyone knows is rigorous. We're using all of our activities are connected to the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. The second aspect is that you have to use the culture of the students um, in the activity, so you're using aspects of the students' culture. And in using this, you help, to stu you help the students um, realize that you can be who you are and still be successful in math. You don't have to conform to what society says being good in math looks like. And then the third aspect of culturally relevant pedagogy is to let students um, you teach them how to uh, recognize, analyze, and critique different social inequities that are going on within their communities and in the world altogether. And in math you specifically teach them to recognize those um, 
social inequities by examining the numbers. So we look at statistics like uh, racial profiling statistics or prison population statistics. Um, we're doing a lot on personal financial literacy because that's a new part of the TEAPS. So we are emphasizing um, how to save, how to budget. Um, also, we're looking at how title loans work, um, how those interest rates can become really, really large if you don't pay them back. So just trying to expose the students to the, their real reality that, that they go through and that their parents go through in the real world. So. Very good. Well, it sounds exciting. Let's go take a look at what some of the classrooms are doing. We are in the third grade classroom, Tarsia, and it looks like the children are making cookie dough. Talk about this. Yeah, so the students here, they're in this classroom, they're learning about fractions, and so they've been talking about adding fractions. So they are learning how to read recipes and also how to modify the recipe according to how many servings they want to make. So they had to add different fractions on the recipe, as you can see. Um, they did multiple cups of sugar, so it started off with one half cup sugar, and they had to make additional cups by adding the different fractions of sugar. So they're, they're adding fractions, and they're getting to integrate that by making cookie dough. Okay, at the end of the activity, what happens to the cookie dough? So at the end of the activity, they will place the cookie dough on a baking sheet, and they're going to bake it. And they will actually get to eat some of the cookies, and they will bag the rest and take the rest home. And, of course, if they did everything correctly, the cookies are going to taste delicious. Yes, hopefully, we're fingers crossed, they will come out great. So right here is an anchor chart, and what they did here was modify the recipe. The original recipe that they had is for a serving of 18. So they had to modify using both multiplication and adding fractions the recipe in order to make 54 cookies. Right here, they're working collaboratively as a team to mix the cookies. She's about to pour the butter in, um, and they're each taking turns adding the different ingredients. They're taking turns adding the different ingredients. So they're also, in addition to math, they're learning life skills. They're learning how to work together, um, which is we like to tell them about STEM. So that's a technique that is necessary for working as an engineer. Um, you do a lot of group work and problem solving as a team, and that's what they're doing here. This is our first grade class, and what they are working on today is shapes. They've learned about the different shapes, triangles, squares, trapezoids, hexagons, and the activity that they're doing now is they are flipping through magazines and looking for those various shapes. The shapes that you see on the floor, those are what we call pattern blocks, which are a type of math manipulative, so they know what those shapes are, and now they have to identify them in the magazine. Um, what makes this activity culturally relevant is they are using some magazines that are common in their culture, such as the Essence magazine, which is the young lady right here is using, and also we have Ebony magazine, but we also have a variety of other magazines that you can see some of the students have as well. So as they are cutting out the shapes, they are sending them to the side because in the end, they will post them on that poster board and make a shape collage. And as you see that poster board, it says, what is a triangle? So that on that poster board, they will have all of the different triangle shapes from the magazine. And then they'll have one for square, one for trapezoid, and one for hexagon as well. So it's important for um, them to learn the different shapes, first of all, because it's a part of the curriculum that they have to know to advance, but also the different shapes that are used in the real context they need to know, such as the yield sign, the stop sign. They need to be able to make those connections that if you see this shape, you typically see a uh, yield sign, and yield means to slow down as you're approaching the intersection. So these shapes are used in various, um, in various fields, even in... Uh, engineering, the triangles are used a lot to build and support structures. So the bridges that you drive on use a lot of triangu triangular shapes. So just the different aspects in life that they'll use these shapes is important. So they need to first be able to recognize these shapes in order to use them. We are now in the second grade classroom. In this class, they have been working on developing their subtraction skills all day. And so right now what they're doing is they're playing a game as a team. It's called the cover-up game. And what they do is they roll the dice and they subtract the two numbers from the dice, the larger one from the smaller one, because they haven't gotten into negative numbers yet. And they cover up the answer to the subtraction problem. And the first one who covers up the whole side, all of the rectangles, wins the game. So this game is developing their subtraction skills. So this is our fifth grade class. In here, they're collecting their own data. So what they're doing is counting how many jumping jacks can they do in one minute. 
And then what they'll do is they'll convert it to an hour and they'll also convert it to a week in a year to see how many jumping jacks could they do in an hour based off what they did in a minute. How many jumping jacks would they, could they do in a year if they just kept going and never stopped based on what they do in a minute. And so they're collecting the data and then later what they'll do once they finish collecting all of their data, they'll focus on finding, um, calculating central tendencies such as the mean, median, and mode and also the range and they will just practice on developing those skills. And again, these are tied directly to those teaks. Yes, these are connected directly to the new teaks. Um, and this is fifth grade, and so with the new teaks, a lot of the material that students used to have to learn in the sixth and seventh grade and eighth grade, they're now learning in fifth grade. So I challenged them to create a slogan for the camp. And so there have been some groups who have created slogans and then they performed their slogans and then we voted on a best slogan. And so they may want to demonstrate. Um, we'll, we'll demonstrate the count by 10 slogan first. And then we'll demonstrate the no twerking slogan. All right. So do the count by 10 one, five, six, seven, eight. Y'all choked. Y'all choked on camera. <laughs> okay, th this is the one that they voted for the best. It's called No Twerk. Five, six, seven, eight. We don't twerk. We do our homework. We don't twerk. We do our homework. We don't grind. We do our times. We don't grind. We do our times. So, so this is our eighth grade group and what they are doing, they have been challenged to prepare or create a menu for our math camp graduation. On the last day we have a graduation and we invite the parents and our sponsors out and they do presentations where they get to present some of the things that they learned throughout the camp. Well, we challenged them, we're gonna be serving food at the graduation and we challenged them to create a menu. So they're working in small group, which we call committees and they're creating a menu and they have a budget and they also have a certain amount of people that they are budgeting for and they have to call around and get prices so that they can figure out what would be the best and most reasonable thing to feed um, the guests at the math camp graduation and also to include door prizes so to create some little door prizes we can give away at the graduation and so they're creating a menu they're creating a budget and they also have to do a presentation they will do a presentation to our staff once they finish and then the staff will choose the best option the most feasible option and we will actually use that menu for the graduation and the group that wins will actually get to go with us they will actually get to go with us and get the items and all of them will help serve, decorate, and um, prepare for the graduation. I see students on the phone and I assume they're talking to vendors. Yes, they are. So they are calling different people, getting prices, trying to figure out, you know, maybe if we can get some discounts since we are a nonprofit organization as well. So they are actually doing some real world planning and also, again, the new TEKS focuses on financial literacy, personal financial literacy, which in entails developing a budget, which they are doing, and calculating different costs, which they are doing. So all of this is directly connected to the teeks. Back now with Tarsia Hubert of Making Awesome Things Happen at Carver Middle School. This was quite impressive and I understand that in addition to all the things going on in the classroom, there's some sort of a 
way for students to earn some bucks. Yes. Talk about that. Okay, so the students, we're teaching them real world concepts as we talked about earlier. Um, so what they do is they earn a dollar for every hour that they work. So they're here from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So they work six hours, so they earn six dollars. Um, but in addition to that, we're also teaching them that if you go in and you work hard, just like in the real world, you work extra hard on your job, put in extra time, you can get a bonus. So they can get bonuses when they work really hard. Or if they get in trouble, like in the real world, if you go to juvenile, you get on probation, you have to pay probation fees. Mm -hmm. So when they get in trouble, they can get fined. So they can either earn extra money or they can get fined and have to pay money for their behavior. Um, and so we use that as an incentive because at the end of the day, the students can go to what we call the math store. And in the math store, we have all different types of items from candy, chips, pickles, soda, to toys. We have jump ropes, yo-yos. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have even larger, more expensive items such as um, tablets and cameras and MP3 players and walkie-talkies and mm -hmm. skateboards. And so the students really love that. So they really want to earn as much money as they can in order to get it. Now, with the more expensive items, there's no way that they're going to be able to pay $6 for them. They cost more money. Money. Mm -hmm. So we also have what's called the math bank. And in the math bank, the students can deposit their money and save it, and the money will collect interest. So we're teaching the students about saving. We're teaching them about compounding interest. And um, at the end, they can take their money out, or whenever they get enough, they can take it out and get the more expensive items. So we also talk to them about instant gratification and delayed gratification, because some students, they just go get candy and pickles every day. And then there are very few that actually say to get the larger items that they want. And so they have to wait, you know, to fulfill that need but in the end they get this great prize that they earn by working hard for it and also we teach them about supply and demand because when things go really fast we increase the price of it so when the pickles go when we sell a jar of pickles in one day oh the next day they come back the price has gone up so we're teaching them about supply and demand and when there's something that's been sitting there for a long time nobody wants it we'll decrease the price on it as well so we're teaching them all these real world concepts and they're actually get they actually get the paper money and they actually get to go and spend it so they're they're having that real 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 world transaction Wow, Tarsia Hubert, you are certainly making awesome things happen here at Carver. Thank you so much for being here, and best of luck on another on a successful camp, your first one in Waco. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank WISD for allowing this to happen, and Carver Academy, and the principal, Mr. McAdoo. Everybody has been supportive. Again, I want to thank our sponsors, Waco Foundation, Cooper Foundation, Time Warner Cable, Connect the Million Minds, mm -hmm. and also Barrett Coaching Forward. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Once again, this is Tarsia Hubert with Making Awesome Things Happen. My name is Dale Caffey on the campus of Carver Middle School, where there are learners today, leaders tomorrow.